Hi everyone, this is Sarah from the South Dakota Agricultural Heritage Museum and we're ready for another Thinking Thursday video. Today I'm going to talk to you and show you how to make a root viewer at home. So some of you might have seen root viewers before that you can buy from the store and some of them get pretty expensive. Normally the cheap ones run around $20, but the one that I'm going to show you how to make today, you might have the supplies already at home and if you don't, they are super cheap and inexpensive to make. So I'm going to show you the supplies and then we'll get started. The first thing you'll need is an old CD case. This is one of the older versions of the CD cases that's about a quarter of an inch thick. And I've already gone ahead and taken out all the paper inserts, plus I've taken out that black insert that usually holds the CD in place so that it's completely empty. Um, there'll be a little edge here at the top that's open and that's totally okay. You'll need some plain old gardening soil, potting mix, whatever you have on hand. You'll need some seeds. The seeds that work the best for this project I've found out are either grass seeds or some type of a bean seed. But if you have other seeds, you can use those too. A permanent marker and a rubber band. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you want to do is take your CD case and open it up. So you'll see that you have your two halves that are open and they're hinged together here in the middle. After you get things open, you want to take your garden soil and sprinkle it in the bottom half of your case, the edge that's away from the middle hinge. And just get a nice layer of soil in here, filling it about halfway up to the hinge. And if you get some on the table, that's okay. You can clean it up later. So there you go. After that, you'll want to take your seeds and make a layer across the top here. You don't have to put a ton in. I'm just sprinkling a few across the whole way. Probably have about 20 seeds in there across the top the whole way across. Now, if you're planting and using grass seeds, a lot of times you just plant those on the top of the ground and you don't have to cover them up with soil. If you're planting a different type of seed, you'll want to put a little layer of soil over the top of your seeds so that it mimics how they grow in the garden. So once you have that done, you'll go ahead and close your case and use your rubber band to secure the bottom. This is kind of an important step. Um, usually this stays closed by itself, you'll feel the click, but especially if you're doing this with kids at home, you're gonna wanna make sure to put the rubber band around that because kids can sometimes get really excited and they move it and they might tip it open. So after you've got that done, then I'm going to go ahead and write my name on the top. Very important if you're doing this with multiple kiddos at home so they remember which one is theirs. And I'm gonna put the date on the top as well. That way I can remember when I planted them so I can see when the seeds grow. And that's what it will look like. So once you have this done, you're going to wanna to take some water and with this open ledge at the top, put some water in there just so that the soil is damp. And then you're gonna to wanna to set this inside of a window well so that you can get plenty of sunlight in it or just send it on a window ledge too, that works. Um, just so that I can get sunlight so the seeds can start to grow. And you'll notice within a few days that your seeds will start to sprout and then you can see the roots growing down so you can see that process of the plant growing and then you'll eventually see the plant starting to grow up. After these plants have grown for a few weeks and they start to fill the case, you can go ahead and transplant them outside into a garden or inside into a different pot, anything works. But that's how to make a really cheap and inexpensive root viewer at home with supplies that you probably already have. If you have any questions, you can contact me, Sarah, at the Agricultural Heritage Museum, and I will answer them. So thanks for joining us on another Thinking Thursday, and we hope to see you again next week.